you know, the first thing that we did was really change our care model. Um, at the time, we did not have a virtual presence in regards to how we interacted. So within about, I think it was about two weeks, we actually stood up our telehealth practice. And so we were able to use uh, video visits as well as telephonic visits and, and really make sure we were available to deliver care. So that was probably one of the most rapid uh, um, developments that we had. Uh, interestingly enough, we had been working on it. It certainly was on our roadmap. Uh, but as I mentioned, you know, we are a, a smaller independent healthcare system growing. So for us to have fully invested in it um, and get it up and running, we were pretty proud of that. Um, one of the things that we realized that by putting uh, virtual access in front of our patients and providing that opportunity, we saw a lot of positive feedback. Um, and we also saw the additional enhancements that were available for us. So what we did after that is we rolled out an app. Um, we call it the MyVHC app. So any of you in the Washington DC Metro, feel free to download that. You can schedule your care. Uh, but what we've developed is we've developed um, scheduling trees, self-scheduling processes. Uh, we've built a lot of online communication uh, that allows folks to, you know, handle their billing processes fully electronic. Um, we do text reminders, things of that nature that are really helpful. The My VHC app is really interesting as well. Um, our organization did a really nice job rolling that out. A lot of great collaboration from our IT folks as well as our marketing folks. Uh, but when you get that electronic communication that says, you've got an appointment, it's on Wednesday and it's at nine o'clock and here it is. If you use our MyVHC app, you're actually able to uh, use that app just like a Wayfinder or GPS and navigate our facilities, which is really important, helps patients find where they need to go. Um, one of the reasons we think that's great is it helps sort of alleviate and reduce the anxiety of patients coming in. With the remote circumstances, it really kind of created that ongoing ability that I think patients really appreciate it. Um, I think John, you had mentioned it kind of helps to ease some of the anxieties and stresses that that come with just getting someone on the other line. Um, so we did enhance the text messaging campaigns with it. And not only just in terms of, hey, you have a balance, but just like just crucial reminders, like don't forget you need to schedule this visit or take a quick check in with your provider just to see how you were doing. So I think that it really did create a, a, a great lane for healthcare in terms of maximizing that one of the things that we did i know apple pay is one of my favorites too um but from a call center perspective we were able uh, we took a while to implement it it's not super sexy cutting edge technology but we were able to implement a pay by phone option uh which was something that was more complicated than i realized you know it's like hey we invented that back in 1982 right so how is it so hard to get this in and there's a lot of complexities and technicalities that I've learned over the past year. But that in itself was created uh, once we implemented it. Patient usage was just really, you know, we we'd anticipate six to eight percent maybe in six months. But from day one, uh, we were seeing at least six percent usage in, in terms of that. So it's sort of like providing them those avenues that they you don't want to utilize, um, regardless of what we want them to choose they have a preference and, and, and it works for them. So, uh, yeah, and, and then from the aftermath of it, we just leaned into it more um, and just find it more, uh, not just beneficial from a patient perspective, but then there's reimbursement benefits uh, from remote patient monitoring additional, uh, you know, CPTs that you could drop if done correctly and properly. We also have populations that um, may not be tech savvy. And so again, that's back to maintaining multiple channels and options based on the needs in our communities. We have immigrant populations, we have refugee populations, language um, needs to be considered um, in these channels. So making sure that um, anything that we introduce remains accessible um, to the diverse populations that we that we serve, I think that's also a consideration. So, um, you know, communication. I think we all had to change, right? COVID kind of forced our hands. Um, I think for the good to implement technology. So now it's how do we continue to translate it and and use it for the benefit um, as we're offering care, but also make sure that um, 
it's it's something that is um, added value for the patient and, and based on their choice.